dun, dun. do that before I forget. And I need to give you a number because we're doing this about a month and a half in advance. Oh, that's okay. I don't need the number for this one. Okay. Because you know it or because you're not going to, because you're not going to say anything. Okay. I don't know. We'll I'm going to say a different number. <laughs> Oh right, okay. <laughs> I just looked up the real one though. If anyone's curious, I can I can blast that out if we need it. <laughs> In the number five, number five is alive. Yes, yes. We we have this is. It's like we're doing short circuit three. Is that what you're getting at? Don't get me started. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, video games use this design too, don't they? What, what were you showing me that? Um, you no, know, I was thinking of the silent running droids. They, they seem kind of in the <laughs> same ball. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I showed you the ones from Mario Odyssey that ripped those off. Right, right. But yes, today a match. Mm. <laughs> today it is Wally. It's films and filth assist and Kane of podcasting. This is Matt here. Hello, it's Mark. There's Mark. It's Luke. There's Luke. Uh, we're, we're not going to round out the gospel today, but we do have a guest. We're going very international today. Luke's in Tokyo. I'm 200 kilometers away. Mark's in Atlanta. Joins today as historian in a haze coming in from Vienna late at night. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, if anyone's interested, um, Mark's the only one recording this at like a normal person time. Uh, 7 a.m. for Luke and myself, and I, it's midnight in Vienna. So, <laughs> And still, I barely made it because I was helping a friend paint their house, uh, their their condo about, uh, I don't know, ten five mi five or 10 miles away, and it took me 35 minutes to get here <laughs> and oh. on Sunday. You were you were right on anyway. time, so it worked out. Um, yeah, barely. The sun <laughs> never sets on the films of filth podcast. Yes, <laughs> or or Atlanta traffic. Oh wow! Uh, so, anyway, some uh, taglines. Uh, the newest sensation in waste allocation. Uh, in space, no one can hear you clean. And uh, he's got a lot of time on his hands. All right. Um, I, I do want to spell out my mental conceit of what we're doing today. So, um, I. I I get most of my guests from the, uh, the the Mission Log Discord, which is why those people keep showing up. And um, that look at Star Trek had gotten to Voyager and to an episode called Living Witness, which is an episode where uh, the Doctor's uh, hologram is brought up in a different culture like oh, 700 man. years later, kind of similar to Wally. Um, and, you know, you wrote an academic paper on this and then talk to the mission loggers uh, that's actually a conversation you can hear on their patreon even if you're not a patreon so uh and i was just like that's interesting i'm looking at our list i'm like hey wally's coming up that that some of those concepts might apply here and if i'm horribly wrong i i apologize but uh you know if you could tell <laughs> folks a, a little more about uh what you do uh beyond that <laughs> yeah um may i may i uh <laughs> be a bit uh cheeky and say I'm really glad to come on Wally -E and not on the um, Pass of Glory, because uh, <laughs> as a historian, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we were trying to keep it, it kind fun. of rolled my nails up, you know, like oh guys, come on. I <laughs> gave so, us yeah, a lot to talk Star about. Star Trek connection is good. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, I also found the Star Trek connection with Wally -E, because there were a lot of references to other films. Mm -hmm. But the Star Trek reference was in the space, the final fun tier in the advertisement. So that's that's for the Star Trek reference. But there was more about other films, really. But I'm sure we'll come to that. Right. Yeah, and otherwise, uh, I'm a historian. And uh, I, I used to be an academic and I left that uh, behind me and now I work in a development corporation, which is, um, well, yeah, um, all the, <laughs> everything that goes wrong needs to be fixed, <laughs> basically. Well, that's kind of this movie, I guess. They failed horribly wow. for mm. several centuries, but yeah. <laughs> I. I just yep. want to, for, for a second, uh, if anyone's listening and is confused by the holographic doctor, uh, the series Star Trek Voyager has a, it's about a ship that gets lost in space, much like lost in space, uh, and they have no doctor on board, so they have to use this emergency hologram, and what happens is it gets copied and left behind in this particular episode, so you're seeing 700 years in the future, 
but basically this is a character on the show who's a hologram which i know uh, sounds weird but he could all and holograms in star trek can touch you and and remember things right sometimes i come on like in i context, have like it makes sense I just, I used to assume yes. everyone knows has deep dorky Star Trek <laughs> knowledge in my life, you know. Uh, it may be that everyone listening to this does, but I just wanted to make sure nobody's yeah. like, "What are you guys talking about?" You're a so hologram. Sending Mark. <laughs> just in case. <laughs> so, um, I, I guess we'll talk a little bit about how we came to this movie. If I remember correctly, Mark, you and I saw this on opening night. Is that is that right? Um, I saw it opening night. I'm sorry, I don't remember if you were there. North the Cab Theater. Does that ring a bell? I apologize. I don't remember <laughs> where I saw this. I know I saw it when it came out. Okay, I, I think we <laughs> saw sorry. it then. I'm really sorry if I don't remember if you were there. <laughs> That's fine. I don't remember who I saw it with. <laughs> <laughs> I think you saw it with me. Uh, anyway, this was I saw 25 it. 25 years ago. Okay, yes, yes, or 15. 15. If you're doing the math right. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, no, I I thought it was a great movie when I saw it. I got the DVD. I think I watched it then and I watched it last night because while I think it's a great movie, this one is weirdly hard to watch for me. Um, it's like it's like a candy coated dystopia that at the same time is like worse than most dystopias. Most dystopias have a little way out for people, which they do get out in the end because it's a you know, it's almost a Disney movie. I'll get to that as well. But um, yeah, it's it, to me, this is like I like to take long walks like multiple times a day. So this is like a special kind of hell for me. You know, uh, Luke, you might agree. I don't know. <laughs> when this came out, I wouldn't have done because I was living in the UK and spending all my time playing video games. But since moving to Japan and getting into hiking and walking and now I would hate that. Yeah. Right. So I just have a weird, you know, just not disdain for these people, but uh, a deep <laughs> pity for the people in this movie which makes it like a little bit hard to watch and i think that's why this is only like my third viewing of it maybe my third viewing of it <laughs> this is my second viewing uh i rem the way i remember feeling about it was when it was in production i was under the impression that the entire thing would be robots and no dialogue and that's what i wanted and the second half I found kind of off-putting because it feels kind of like someone trying to do a fat joke for third for an hour, but also trying to be nice about it, which <laughs> maybe rubs me the wrong way a little bit. It doesn't feel as mean now as it did then, and that might just be because um, I was I knew what was coming. I don't know, but also now in retrospect, this feels like a terrifying, like a. Uh, lust for apple products <laughs> that is basically the the way i feel about this now is it, it feels like well you can either have the stuff that's good and you like and destroy the planet or you can have an apple thing that's efficient and good and works when i know that it doesn't i, I feel like eve will be replaced in a year or something uh <laughs> anyway that's that's just my twisted thoughts about it now Hello second Marcy viewing behind luke for, oh, for hey. our audio podcast. She's gone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, uh, what was your experience yeah. with this film? Did you did you see when it came out? This your first time? <laughs> yeah, I saw it when it came out, and I saw it again today. And uh, actually, it's it was nice. I saw it when it came out, and I went to a drive-in cinema in Germany. That's um, so that was exotic as as such already. So that was quite quite a nice experience, and. Um, I remember liking it a lot at the time. And in the past few weeks, I was all excited about today and, and the podcast. So I was talking about Wally, you know, with the people around me and uh, everybody was like, oh, Wally, oh. You know, so the the memory of it being super sweet is is really in the foreground for many people if they saw it way back. But today it was kind of, I remembered this this film being in two parts. Like the first part, I really liked at the time, and the second part was like, okay, you have to wrap up the story. But it is actually really long. I mean, they, when they leave Earth, it's like a half an hour in, so you still have a whole hour of of you know, the rest of the story. And uh, and this time, I don't know. Um, uh, I was l much less less touched by the by the story somehow it, it was less like oh how sweet but more maybe more critical in a way mm. i don't know how was it for you guys felt like well, maybe actually, the red flag last night 
last night was my first time watching this film properly. Uh-huh. I think I think I'd caught most of it, like when my brother and sister had been watching it, or the kids at school had been watching it. Um, but I stubbornly refused to watch this film because I grew up a huge fan of Short Circuit, and I saw the first trailer of this film, and I was like, "That's Johnny Five. They've ripped off the robot." And then the director's giving quotes like, no, I haven't even seen that film. It's just a coincidence. And I was like, <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> You're lying to me. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I refused to see this film until I had to watch it for this podcast. <laughs> um, and, yeah, I went into it and, like, Wally's a creep. <laughs> yeah, that was a red flag thing I just mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. Just um, drags his comatose girlfriend around for a couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah, because her, her she was awake for what, maybe two days? Like a day, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Although Wally has sex. been, I mean, he's achieved sentience by himself, mm-hmm. right? He's never had an interaction with anything but a cockroach. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I guess we have to give him like a little bit of a pass. He's a new kind of intelligence. He's an isolated kind of intelligence. Who knows what happens in that case, you know? <laughs> I, I'll say he's this. Kind of Robinson Crusoe, you know, like he's alone on his on his planet and he just gathers around what, what makes him comfy and everything. Yeah, kind of a, so, yeah. a reverse Crusoe, I guess, where the world has become the wasteland and uh, the mm. majority is lost out in a distant place. <laughs> he's a hoarder, but I, I will say this, that... <laughs> I was barely paying attention at the end of this film. I was just shoveling Chinese food in my face because I was hungry. But I found myself weeping uncontrollably for this, the for some reason. This movie just stabbed the the Pixar wow. like the thing where Pixar just gets you sometimes. Mm. I was not crying the first time I saw it, so okay. I don't know. Interesting. I always feel like it's the first wow. eight minutes of up sort of thing. And a Toy Story three that gets yeah. people. I don't. I don't remember Wally quite getting people i did note that <laughs> gee kind of like the most interesting part of this movie might be what we're getting hinted at in the end credits <laughs> mm. I, I really yeah I, I really think that it was just a weird thing where i was it's like that thing where you see something in your peripheral vision like they just caught me off guard and i was suddenly like oh oh why no stop it stop it pixar <laughs> <laughs> anyway my my notes during that time was like captain baby which is on the nose but yeah <laughs> peter gabriel's here because they got the wrong guy for tarzan uh which had phil collins who sounds like peter gabriel but doesn't do you know as much of the fake world music stuff i don't know who would be i don't know who should have written the big song at the end but i feel like it should have been someone german or something <laughs> should have been like vangelis or something for the for the end he's of greek this. but yeah sure oh man uh, <laughs> no my god but they what, have know. they have richard strauss for the german co- composer with the um theme of the uh, space odyssey yeah, yeah. you know the not, first steps mm-hmm. of the of the yeah. yes. when they get yes. off their machines Although not not, so not, you not have the, the best representative it. of German culture there, if you ever look up his oh. history. Uh, <laughs> let's not get into that. <laughs> also, There's I mean, a lot of folks have... you shouldn't look up their history from that period. <laughs> well, Beethoven had no friends because he was, uh, <laughs> well, one, he couldn't hear yeah. you. So that was a big part of it. And two, he was a prickly bastard, apparently. Like, do you want to hang out? What? <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Um, uh, I, I do want to just. Well, we do, do have a Hal here, sort of. Yeah, a, not yeah. a yeah, one-dimensional definitely. one. Hal on a wheel, which again, I, I, you know, Andrew Stanton, director, could not say he didn't know about that because he's using oh, the yeah. theme. <laughs> <and> theme. <laughs> um, speaking of copying other people's robots, this film came out a year after Portal, and that's very Glados. It it came out. I think it came out mm. a year before, actually, or it was it was very close. I don't think that they ripped Glados off, no. but it is striking like Mm -hmm. that but but also this that kind of bothered me like the the one new nitpick i had was that character wasn't even a character like they didn't give him any depth at all it was just like i must stop them well yeah he was just mm -hmm. he was just he'd been given an order and he was following it basically he was the corporate bottom line right of uh big and large yeah yeah (laughs) i I just with a german name by the way (laughs) because originally it's called otto and it's the, mm-hmm. after he becomes auto, like autopilot. Yeah. But German, German name, German guy, bad guy, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> the, Bravo. The dialogue. The, the, the British dialogue, too. <laughs> the, the dialogue for him actually was um, text to speech. There is no voice actor for, for uh, oh. auto. Yeah, text to speech. It actually, 
it reminded me a lot, and I did enjoy this, of the old 80s robot voices. Like you would get in yeah. like a short circuit or something. That Which early text to speech. <laughs> yeah, 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 I love that. Mm. So um, that's just, actually what they used here, yeah. Luke, to clarify, have you seen... Mark, yeah, Portal was the year before Wally. <laughs> oh, okay. Shit, sorry. Um, yeah, I, I, I was wondering if any of you have seen the Portal mod with the TikTok voice. You know you're asking the wrong person if you're looking at me. <laughs> I have, but, but just it imagining so, it now, I hate it. <laughs> it is so funny. All the comments on the YouTube video are like, I am so enraged. I don't know how, I didn't know I could be this mad. Um, anyway. I want to do just a bit of, of actually, of not quite Disney history um, uh, corner here. Uh, this is, in, in this time, this is a period when Pixar, so Pixar was its very much its own company for the first several movies. Uh, this is mm -hmm. the point where they were like, maybe we're going to end our deal with Disney and just work with someone else. At which point, uh, you know, they change CEOs. Bob Iger comes up and says, goes to Steve Jobs and says, give me any price. I will buy Pixar. And that's when they become inextricably linked. But in this like kind of in-between period, that's when Pixar was like, well, Disney's not even talking to us at this point. So um, this movie, Ratatouille and Up, are basically made completely outside of the bubble of Disney. So these are kind of like the arty Pixars. Because after this, they get, let's do sequels, Monsters, University, uh, Toy Story 3. I was going to say, those three feel like the end of that, back when you had to see every Pixar film. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, it does all get a little bit cast to The Last Dinosaur. Right. I mean, you get Inside Out and you, know, you get plenty of good turning red. You get good movies, but yeah, it's it's not just like a. No, but there was a point average. where like every year there was a new Pixar and it was like, this film is the best kids film you've ever seen and it reinvents animation. Right. And I felt like that was happening every yeah. year for a while. But these three I in particular that... are just being made outside of the corporate bubble mostly. I mean, mm. Steve Jobs still kicking around there somewhere, but. <laughs> the funny thing is, I still feel that way about the first 30 minutes of this. Did anybody mm -hmm. feel like yes. it looked a lot better mm -hmm. during that mm -hmm. part? It felt like the animation yeah. kind of went like, like went as soon as humans. It, re it really felt like an artist made the first half, and then the business people yeah. told you, "Yeah, but you need to do this bit." <laughs> yeah, and and I was told apparently everybody from Pixar was required to watch all the Charlie Chaplin and uh, and Buster Keaton films over and over for inspiration <laughs> for the the robot mm. stuff, which well, you know, makes I a lot of that. sense. <laughs> yeah uh, me too it's a great idea it's it's um i would say that that also makes me think of the uh ape stuff from godzilla x kong this past year where there is a great sequence with no dialogue the best part of the movie mm -hmm. <laughs> yes the best part of the movie but it, 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 yeah. it may be i don't know if it's more expensive to do the whole movie like that or maybe the executives are like no you gotta put people in it i'm not really sure about well, that what part. was especially strange um during the part where it's just the robots on Earth, they have live action actors in all the footage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But Fred then you Willard still get alone. Yeah. You still <laughs> but, get. Yeah. You still get. Well, then there's also watching oh, the old people movies. walk by. That's true. Yeah. And he's watching the old, the old, um, Sing Sing on dance movies. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But then you get to the spaceship and they're like these cartoon humans, and it feels really out of place. <laughs> well, it would be hard so... to cast those people and maybe offensive. <laughs> Since we're talking well, yeah, about then, then don't don't put the actors in the first half if you're gonna do that, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, the contrast so, is funny actually. Yeah. So Sorry. since we're sort of talking about the the uh filtering this through history, or uh Una, how do you feel about the idea that the documents left behind are broadcast television that is that is made by a studio? I mean that that feels like a weird filter. Because do you mean the musical that he's playing all the time? M maybe not so much that specifically, but say that the only documents left is uh, to document humanity are story based television and film. Like it's it's weird that the idea that it's not necessarily people telling stories, but it's the stories that people have told. They're left behind. That, that's sort of the impression I get. I, I'm like sure he's like, "What's more. a farm?" And it gives him like a video clip of a farm, mm -hmm. <laughs> or, it, or it gives you an episode of Green Acres. Like that's a weird. Yeah. I don't know. But then that's... again, it contrasts because then he gets the pictures of of what Eve gathered when she was on her mission, and he's just like, "No, that's just that's not the same." Wait, wait, wait. That's that's not what I saw. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So it it does contrast like these these pictures are 
don't 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 represent what he's going to find so it is it is also underlined as being a, a story or or a construct that it's that's not going to prepare him for the return to earth it's kind of so, like the yeah. common youtube comment i just recently as mark knows i've obsessively watch b-52s and tribe called quest videos and, and they often have the comment in the youtube just like gee this makes me feel nostalgic for a time i was like never there for or something you know Which... <laughs> there's a word for that i think is it in german oh never mind i don't want to go down that rabbit hole there's I a word correct, i don't know what it is <laughs> i often think that matt about um video games because mm -hmm. Because I grew up reading games magazines and like watching TV shows, I have all this nostalgia for games that came out before I was born. Mm -hmm. like, so there's I definitely a of... thing of when you get into a culture, you're sort of you're back. You're like, oh, here's all of our nostalgia. You can have this now as well. Like kids today are watching the Ninja Turtles because their parents were nostalgic for it. I don't uh, want to get us on another film, but uh, Ready Player One is all about the 80s. That's too much about that. The it 80s is in a way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if that assumes that people will be obsessed with the 80s 50 years from now, which is already. I not... said, <laughs> I said, don't get me started on Wally. Genuinely, don't get me started on Ready Player One. <laughs> but, 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 no, you don't know. That's a, that's a trigger word for him. He um, went on an hour long rant about the movie what, three years ago. <laughs> Luke, I, oh but, sorry, sorry. No problem. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, Luke, I totally get what you're saying because if there's any kind of weird arcade where there are these mechanical games from the 70s before I was born, where it's like you shoot BBs at targets and things like that, I want to play those more than I want to play video games. So, or, or old pinball machines. They're weird 70s. Yeah, see, I, I grew up going to the boardwalks in Delaware and Maryland or Hoboth Beach, Ocean uh, Ocean City, and they just had those arcades. So growing up, they had these games from the 60s and 70s. So, so Luke, I, I understand what you're saying intellectually, but I'm like, oh, I yeah, actually yeah, yeah. did. You know, Space Invaders was still there when I was four or five, you know, <laughs> so I was kind of ground floor on those video games. Well, but... I also think from roughly my generation on, being nostalgic for your own childhood is weird because I had the internet. So everything I saw as a kid, I it never went away. Like mm. if I if I ever felt like, oh, I want to re-listen to the Power Rangers theme tune, I could just do it. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think a big part of nostalgia is you see something as a kid, you don't see it for 30 years and then you see it again. Mm, yeah. Although I guess mm. for nostalgia for things you weren't around for. I mean, I'm wearing a Beach Boys Pet Sounds t-shirt here. So mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, um, I was listening to a podcaster uh, sort of posit that the the idea that we tolerated JRPGs from the 80s and 90s that lasted so long was because that was the only way you could listen to the music. <laughs> like you you could only listen to the final fantasy music if you played final fantasy 6 for 100 hours so although i mostly played all my jrpgs from 2010 to 2012 or so so well <laughs> yeah matt played I, them on the train and i bet the music was still because good. they made the commute disappear yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> But as um, a historian, don't get me started on nostalgia because it's all about the good old days mm -hmm. and it's it's a total construct and I work on mm -hmm. collective memory and stuff. And I mean, it's it's like the good old days never existed. Like if you really uh -huh. want to go into it, you know, just 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 pick any any thing about medicine, for example, or, you know, dentistry and everything. And you're like, good old days. Yeah, not so sure. Oh, God. Uh, yeah, but we can circle back to Wally uh, with the uh, <laughs> arcade game he plays when she's in a coma and he's like you know he's playing this this uh what is it called it's it's a it's uh you know with the ball um oh pong, oh, pong yes yep that's the one so back to the arcades in wally -E too yeah. <laughs> this is a, maybe this that's is why a... it works because it's so 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 nostalgic and it's it's shorthand and we recognize it and we go for mm -hmm. it this Although is the funny thing that i you and That's I get right. at a Pong table right now. We're going to have a good time with Pong, you know, like this like with another thing. person, you know, on the proper hardware. It's still fun. He's not in but a this coma. Is, yeah. This is yeah. also a filter, though, because this is a thing that I experienced the very tail end of. Um, there was a video game crash in the 70s because too many Pong clones came out. And mm -hmm. if you bought a home console before the Atari 2600, it was Pong. There was a Pong you could buy that was Sears. There was a Radio Shack Pong. We had the Radio Shack Pong. So 
that even that if you were around at a certain time you would have been absolutely sick of pong if you were yeah. you know uh if that's the only entertainment you had so but everybody knows it yeah, exactly it, it basically was so popular that it is it has survived but it's also just that n none of us have been sitting at home for for the most part with nothing to do but play versions of pong with your with your <laughs> sister you know so uh yeah that's but that's just another example of things things seemed a lot different from this end um course, I want... wally's playing the computer he's not playing another person i just put on the uh, qualifier yeah it's got to be with another person you know playing the computer's no fun <laughs> but that's all he has so yeah. i guess that's what you take what you can get well, I want to read one blurb from the trivia from IMDb. At the time the movie was being made, Steve Jobs was on Disney's board of directors, and of course he had an iPhone before anyone else did, and he loved showing it off. When director Andrew Stanton saw it, he surmised that it would one day lead to everyone going around with their faces buried in computer screens all the time, and he decided to incorporate that into his vision of the future. So that is that hits a lot different now than it did in 2008. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, Friday night, I was at the train station going home, and uh, there was probably about 30 people on the platform. I was standing, and I'm I'm off, and like, I'll play five minutes a game while I'm waiting for a train, but I was just like, you know, I think I'm not going to. Maybe because I was about to watch Wally again. But uh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I guess I think, I, I think I'm actually just going to be on this platform. And then I did notice that on the other platform, there were a couple um, high school girls actually interacting with each other and giggling and running off into an elevator. So I was like, that's the only real thing happening here. Uh, everything else is, you know, like they don't even notice they're in space in this movie until, you know, something well, stops them. <laughs> her screen turns off and she's like, well, I'm looking at the world, but she's just yeah. looking at more screens. <laughs> but they're not her screens. Yeah, they're true. someone else's yeah. screens. <laughs> right. So, well, that's why we're at the pool and the stars and stuff. And when I was people. a kid, when I was a kid, my parents would lament like, oh, you're always watching TV instead of going outside. And now mm -hmm. parents lament, Oh, they're always looking at their iPad instead of watching TV together. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. They're going to complain. Oh, my kids are looking at two iPads instead of one iPad, like I did. <laughs> <laughs> my daughter didn't want to go with us yesterday. We were we were going to an appointment and getting lunch and stuff. And uh, yeah, yeah. She I, she said she had to study, which maybe she did. But yeah, she just wanted to hang around the house. Um, meanwhile, we yeah. found a weird cake cafe that actually looked like something out of a Twilight Zone episode. Uh, oh, Luke, do you know cool. the place with the the red front? It's not far from the main school. Oh, I've never been in, but I've walked past it a bunch of times. Yeah, yeah. Go in there. It's like the Twilight Zone. I, I ate a cake Send that me looked pictures. like a dog. Uh, they're in the Discord, by the way, if you want to look. Oh, nice. <laughs> um, yeah, I was going to say, I, I do believe that a burnout or a backlash will happen against this stuff before everyone is in chairs, not able to move. You know, I I I have a little more faith. I have more faith than this movie has, even if they're sort of prisoners of Walmart on the Walmart ship. But this is a good in example of if this movie had something like the screens kept having pop up ads and blue screens, then we would recognize mm. this as a problem in 2008. We'd be like, oh, this stuff doesn't work. But just like now, we would pro like I was saying, I I kind of feel like Eve would just mess things up. Like I I can imagine Eve showing up with a plant, and it's like not a plant; it's just a like a fake plant or something. Mm -hmm. Because I'm used to all of my Apple devices annoying me by getting things wrong all the time. <laughs> and, well, I uh... raised a dumb <laughs> casual game last week, which never asked for money at any point, right? But it got to the point, it was like a strategy game, but I got to the point where you really can't advance in this unless you're spending half the time playing the ads, right? So yeah. I'm like, that, this is, what this is, I, I was like, am I doing bath thoughts here by playing this? I, you know, I just erased <laughs> it from my, it felt like the bath thoughts of video games. So I was like, okay, down the drain with that game, even though I had been spending quite a bit of time with it in the past few days, uh... you know, just let's flush that, get rid of it, yeah. you know? All of my computers keep trying to update themselves to act like tablets. <laughs> and it's like, no, I think you see computers for 30 years. Please just keep being a computer. <laughs> Everything I re rely on to do anything now, when I go to the search window, it says, hi, I'm AI. I will search mm -hmm. for you. Type something you need and I will search for you because I'm AI. And it's like, it's just search. It, it, yeah. we're, we're, it's, it's starting to become too obvious what we're being sold. And <laughs> it's maybe, mm -hmm. uh, eating into my soul a little bit but i think we're the like gen people younger than us 
because they will have grown up around this kind of technology, it feels natural, I think, to let let the computer kind of do a lot of things for you. And that's how you end up sitting in a chair where you just let the robots bring you a drink and you just have your screen that does, you know, you do what you're told on it. Like, I can see, I don't mean, because when I was watching the film yesterday, every now and then I'd want to be like, this is two on the nose. And I'd be like, it's a film for children. It's allowed to be two on the nose. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> so Good I don't point. think we're quite, we're quite going to end up, you know, jellified blobs in floating chairs. But there is a drift towards letting what well, quote unquote AI, it's not AI, but no, plagiarism yeah. software do all the work for yes. us. Um, I do wonder is a though, real trend for if, certain if, if they're missing part of human nature. So we see the actual mm -hmm. babies uh, in a classroom probably being taught the gospel of uh, big and large, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that's mm -hmm. how you get raised. You don't learn about real history. The captain learns everything about Earth. But I am like, there is an inherent, you know, like, I want to rebel. I want to do something different. So when kids do get all this technology, uh, going to my, to my daughter recently, we, we bought her a cassette tape deck connected to a radio because she's like radio is cool it's live you can't just get it on youtube you know you have to do it mm. I, and i can tape segments and stuff and uh I, yeah and they have to be sharp on the radio because it's live hey and this podcast is not even live i usually don't really edit these so it's kind of live but it's not right but yeah she's yeah. like impressed like with the the skill that is needed to pull off a radio thing as opposed to just like making in you know like obsessing on things for youtube or, or something like that and i remember just watching that tape <laughs> i watched a vhs with my brother who was used to dvds and like we stopped it and came back to it the next day and he's like whoa it remembered where we are <laughs> my, my and you know players sometimes remembers oh sometimes i was gonna doesn't. say blu-ray players are worse at remembering where you are than anything that's ever existed because the software is java based so it's basically <laughs> the the I won't, I won't get too deep into that, but Blu-ray players are not designed to automatically resume the disc from where you are. But um, to what you were saying, Matt, about like the human nature, the most human characters in this whole film to me were the malfunctioning robots. Mm. The, the guys yeah. that Wally sort of accidentally becomes the liberator of. <laughs> from the psychiatric was... ward with the yes. straight jacket and everything. Yeah, they're the misfits. Yeah. yeah, although humanity itself has some notable psychiatric issues at this point on this on this space on this galactic star cruiser. <laughs> well, I, I'm assuming that when people had psychiatric problems, they weren't throwing them out of the ship. But I don't know that for sure. We don't ever see any people but, with massive psychiatric problems. But the robots are malfunctioning. Like yeah. they're, you know, I I think it's kind of nice that they kept them. You know what I mean? It's like. I, they clearly had a garbage disposal robot and clearly, you know, Wally almost gets garbage disposed. Mm. So there was some little part of me where I was like, this is nice that they are housing and caring for their sick robots. Maybe it's just too expensive to make new ones. <laughs> <laughs> That's recycling. It's totally green. But yeah, I guess the reason they felt alive to me is because they were all unique. And the reason the dystopia here doesn't quite ring true, there's no system where everyone would conform. Yeah. Like, sure, maybe the majority would end up in these chairs, but you would still have, you know, health nuts running around being like, no, man, Teenagers. I like walking on my legs. Yeah. That's what I thought, but then they do, the computer does point out that over 700 years of microgravity, like it is partly mm. inertia, but it's partly mm. physic physiologically mm -hmm. these people have kind of fallen apart as mm -hmm. well. So seven yeah, years but... down, it might be really difficult to be a health nut. I mean, the captain, um, I assume the captain is our Star Trek captain, the best of us. He's the one that can get <laughs> out of his chair first and take some baby <laughs> steps, right? I, mean, yeah. I love that guy. He was great. He was, He deserved to be captain if anybody did. <laughs> like he was um, the only one that seemed, you know, like everyone else is completely glued to their screen. He at least wakes up in the morning and is like, I got a few tasks to do first, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's excited about doing his morning announcement, right? Uh, so much that he's ignoring what the, the, well, I guess a green alert in this case, but. <laughs> um, you know, as a, as a historian, then I, I guess I'll ask, uh, in, in past examples, welcome. Um, when does 
a group of people collectively just get this this diluted not not even like in a, a in a political ideal but just in like inertia and apathy oh gosh so this is uh <laughs> you're catching me by surprise and also because uh as we are recording uh there were elections in europe uh so uh yeah it's it's a very political question <laughs> <laughs> yeah so I, i'm I not gonna go one. that rabbit hole <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> do But do okay. we have Do you think that we yeah. have a parallel to this in a society? I'm not I'm going to rule out cults because obviously cults is the easy the easiest say cults, but do do you feel like that there's been this much tunnel vision in a modern society anywhere? I mean, I guess I guess what Nazi Germany is the obvious, but that's this is North clearly Korea not is Nazi Germany. One, okay, right? <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Um, you don't really know how people feel in North Korea, but I as i understand it not everyone is unhappy but well how the hell should i know I, I, Turkmenistan, I, I, that's an interesting one where they've recently built a city they a giant city they want a bunch of people move into huh I'll, i'll answer right. with um with another science fiction classic uh instead of going into history um i read the time machine uh recently uh hg wells time machine And he also had a version of humanity with a decadence, but he didn't have it homogeneous as in Wally, -E, which is for kids. Good point, you know, you can't, you can't do it too complicated. <laughs> but in the time machine, it's it, they separate into into classes that become mm -hmm. biologically different, and that kind of made sense because, and that's kind of something I miss in Wally. -E, but then again, again, it's a, it's a film for kids. But it's surprising that the decadence goes only one way and there's nobody just, you know, doing anything else. Yep. There's the robots, right? If you were making it not for kids, oh, maybe the robots yeah. would be a slave race of humans. But to make it child friendly, they had robots instead. Oh, the black yeah. hole had the yeah. slave race of humans and that was a Disney movie. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> i mean there's also brave new world which i keep going back to brave new world because i'm i'm one of those i subscribe to that huxleyism is really what we're going through right now but of course that had a way more complicated outer world than this does um, but um, it also not, has uh... babies as a collective so sorry there's there is yeah. a, a kind of a background reference to that because the babies are are, are in the nursery Um, people aren't really, I mean, I don't know. It's, you know, it's, 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 it's something we can read into it. Yeah. It, it kind of implied we didn't know or care whose baby was whose. Yep. You just, you have a, I mean. They might've been grown. They might've been tested. When we, yeah, so when, we were watching it, <laughs> when we were watching it, mostly it turned to me and said, like, how do they have babies? And I was like, I guess they just do something in their chair and it's grown <laughs> in a tube somewhere. <laughs> I, yeah, I am pretty sure that they're just, well, the, the thing is, It's clear that the plan was not to be in space for 700 years from right, the start. Yeah, yeah. So True. what I, I guess there's just a lot of questions this movie is not going to answer. And that's that's fine. <laughs> it is pretty interesting that you can just grab a baby when it falls over and it's your baby now. <laughs> um, They didn't hadn't noticed the babies up to that point. <laughs> so yeah, Mark, your question yeah. was like, what example of like in the modern world, that kind of tunnel vision? Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of them, but because of the way like the sort of internet culture works and you can put yourself in an echo chamber, like mm. in, within one society, there's five different tunnel vision groups who think they're the only way of thinking. Like you see, I don't know why we keep talking about video games on this week's episode, but you see like these guys who are like, no man, the feminists are ruining games. They're ruining everything. And in their head, everyone agrees with them. Mm. And then it's like, You step outside and it's just like, no, you're a tiny percentage of loud idiots on the internet who think this. And like 90% of people are perfectly happy to play these games. But people put themselves in these echo chambers and believe everyone in the... Oh yeah, I'm I'm speaking what everyone's thinking. And this well, is true. And being outside of that, sometimes I suspect those people, like uh, Mad Max Furiosa bombed recently. And the mm -hmm. first thing I think of is... Oh, it's these anti-feminists are are all like behind this, and I don't, mm. I can't say that's, I can't really say that for sure. I don't, I'm sure they were complaining 
about it but um, <laughs> let's take the star trek filter again there's a the new trek is so woke it's like trek was woke in 1965 where are you talking about go back trek to the cage woke <laughs> yeah <laughs> but, but also if a new star trek series fails do we can we really be sure that those people are are behind it or is it like paramount blew their marketing budget giving a ceo a huge like package or something you know mm-hmm. <laughs> so we don't it's i yeah i i do i strongly dislike those people but i also am quick to blame them for everything when it's probably not everything is not their fault no they're blaming right. you mark so they're not that powerful yeah. <laughs> they're, they're not they're not that powerful and there are not as many of them as there seem like there are because they're so loud yeah <laughs> that's you know this train <laughs> but like, that, i yeah. mean it doesn't have to be that example it can be like it can be QAnon people, or it can be liberal, lefty. Trump is definitely going to jail people, right? Mm-hmm. They're all reading the same news websites and the same talking to the same people. They convince themselves that their version of reality is true. Um, I listen to the QAA podcast, and something they ah. talk about a lot is that um, there's like a marketplace of realities now, and you mm-hmm. can just like, no, I I like the version of reality where this thing that I believe is true. And you can just only talk to people who also believe that and just but aren't we all like that Mm. exactly right but i think if you go back 20 30 years when it wasn't so easy to be in an online community if you go to the pub you have no choice but to hear other people's opinions as well (laughs) (laughs) whereas now it's like and i i do it i'm guilty of it i'm like someone says they don't like mario galaxy it's like I've muted you and I will never listen to a word you say ever again for the rest of my life. <laughs> well, I like Mario Galaxy for the record. That's why we're <laughs> yes. I mean, it's, I guess uh, it's like how you but, take in your news. Like uh, in Wally, it's all filtered co- directly through the big and large, the, the corpse, the ghost of the big and large corporation. It's not even a real corporation mm-hmm. anymore, except on this ship. Um, but, by you know, large, when, I, when I. Oh, it's by and large. Okay, sorry. Maybe I was thinking of the humans You're on the ship. You're just making a little fat joke. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, an unintentional Cancel. mean fat joke. <laughs> but um, you know, when I get up in the morning, I'll usually go to CNN. Do I see bias in the CNN headline? Sure, but that's like kind of my like. I already know their bias. I'll get a general vibe here. If there's news, I'm like, that's interesting. Or hmm, I wonder if they got it right. Now I will start. You know, usually the next one I'll go to is Fox News because I'm not a Fox News guy, but I'm like I I want to see the go straight to the, the other. Of CNN. I yeah. want to go straight to the opposite, uh, and then and then I'll go. Well, let me see a little more woke. I guess I'll go to MSNBC, and of course, some people are just getting the news from Twitter. That's the problem, right? At least go look for yeah. something that like at least resembles a viable source first. <laughs> well, well, that is it. Gets complicated because for a while I was getting news from Al Jazeera, but then I can't even remember there was something about Al Jazeera's bias that I do not even remember what it was. It was some complicated foreign politics that I don't entirely understand. <laughs> so I, I don't even, I don't oh, even Matt, know. Do you anymore. remember? Do you remember when Shinzo Abe was shot? I think I was with you, and we were looking at the news, and it was like. BBC News, Shinzo Abe is dead. American News, Shinzo Abe is dead. Canadian News, Japanese News, Shinzo Abe is in critical condition. Oh, wow. I, I, I'll tell you the first the first headline we saw. I do remember this. It was Shinzo Abe has collapsed. So you're yes. like, oh, did yeah, he yeah have they like didn't a even mention he shot at first. Yeah, yeah. because <laughs> the the Japanese news media will like toe the government line until they're told it's okay to pr- print the story, whereas every other country was just like, we've got the news, we're going to print it. See Shin Godzilla. <laughs> Godzilla yeah. does not exist until the government acknowledges him. <laughs> it, whatever. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I mean, go down the whole rabbit hole of UFO disclosure. <laughs> that is... That's also been oh, in the Japanese boy. news recently with, uh, involving the government. Huh. So, yeah. Okay. Like, we better make Has a be UFO plan. <laughs> Has to be approved. Has to be approved. It does not exist until it's gotten an official government consent. <laughs> <laughs> Which again, of it, the by and large is the same thing. And unless by and large is consented, it does not exist on this axiom ship, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, it's very interesting because at the time this was made, it was Walmart, right? And then since then, mm-hmm. it's really been supplanted by Amazon, even mm-hmm. though Walmart does still exist and they're still pretty dominant. But yeah, I, always I was think thinking, back... watching the film, like, I can't think what company this would be in real life because. I mean, Walmart, I know it was big in the States, but we never had it outside. But you're mm. right, it's Amazon is the real... That's maybe why this feels a little bit quaint. 
because it's like, mm. oh, sure, they're a big evil corporation, but at least they're on the high street. Well, in the media sphere, <laughs> it's <laughs> Disney now, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they own every IP at this point almost. <laughs> well, they own um, Alien now. The next every IP. The new Alien movie is, oh, is it Romulus or, what is it? or am I thinking? Trek yes, Man? Anyway, Romulus. Uh, it's, it's, Romulus, Romulus. Yeah. it's a Disney movie. That's a Disney movie. This is the Disney Alien Hello, movie. Ripley is yeah. a Disney princess. Have... <laughs> um, I've seen a lot of interesting theories that Wally is a Disney princess and Eve is not. <laughs> It, oh, 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 I've of... notes about that. I've notes about that. Oh yeah. Um. Yeah. Because she's in a coma, kinda. But I was, I was thinking, is it, is it Sleeping Beauty, kinda, and la la la. <laughs> and at the end, Wally isn't himself anymore, and she wakes him up with a kiss. Mm, yep. So she's the princess charming to wake him up. Da da. Yep. And I mean, Sleeping Beauty, Snow White, the prince comes into the forest as and kind of exploring, possibly hunting, which is what Eve is doing, landing on the planet and you know, on a on a exploratory on a mission. And mission. Yeah. Wally's castle is that trailer with, you know, junk in it. Well, <laughs> I mean, um, Eve is the adult. That's just yeah. how it is. Although Wally's a lot older than Eve. Oh, good point. He's like seven hundred years is... old. <laughs> <laughs> and Eve is perfect also which is which is also i mean there is a huge gender thing here because Mm -hmm. he's he's quaint he's funny he's nice but she's high tech she's perfect she's lethal well it's like glitchy too though she just goes into standby (laughs) they're robots with no need to have gender but pixar cannot help themselves Mm -hmm. But super gender mm-hmm. though, where she's round and curved and sleek, totally and he's boxy super and square. <laughs> Interestingly, the the E stands for Earth. When you see the wall A, I always thought that the wall A meant that it was bigger, but A stands for Axiom, which is uh, the wall yeah. A robots are for the ship. So you'd think the Earth robots would be a lot bigger than the ones for the ship. I don't know. That's no, not. They, that they were really abandoning. Anywhere. They were abandoning thought. Earth, keeping I mean, ship, abandoning Earth. W- would this still be cute if Wally was really huge? Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're asking that question, Luke. <laughs> yeah, you're asking, I love the, giant the, robots. Yeah, Eve is taller than Wally. Also, mm. an interesting thing because usually in the gender contract and everything, she she'd be in a slight slightly smaller than him but she's I'm taller them, she's definitely taller i'm seeing her in that sort of mario and princess peach homer and marge sort of couple true <laughs> yeah if his posture was better he'd be kind of tall but he's he's sort of hunched over right yeah well you get when he's when he reboots you get that that i guess standing up straight wally for a few seconds mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah which I guess is technically what he's supposed to look like, but he, I mean, he is, he go he goes right in with the misfit robots, doesn't he? I mean, even yeah, though he is me. still doing his job, doing his job for no reason. I mean, he's the last. Um, I guess he did. He cleared enough space for that plant to grow. So like he was doing it's something his job. Useful. Yeah. I think that's kind of how they're compatible is that both of them are doing their job. They're both mm-hmm. hated. Professional I mean, adults. And for, a, yes. and for yes. a silent film, you know, they start the first dialogues as kind of, you know, what's your directive? What's your job? What do you do? La, 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 la. The small talk of about, you know, when they get to know each other. So what's yeah. your job? Oh, yeah, I do, I do the rubbish. What's yours? Oh, it's classified. Yeah. <laughs> Scan and plants. It, it is. It's, <laughs> it is pretty interesting. interesting. Oh, sorry, go ahead. You go with your interesting first because I'm looking up something oh. to back mine up. I was gonna say it's interesting <laughs> that there's only one Wally and one Eve in this movie, but every Toy Story movie has at least several Buzz Light years. No, we do see a bunch of Eves. <laughs> oh yeah, they didn't. Yeah, they don't really true. do anything, do they? And we I... see a no. They, well, they didn't find plants, so they just shoved back yeah. into storage. Wow. Um, and we do see a like a dead Wally, I think. Yeah. Oh yeah. A couple. Yeah. Oh, because he's uh, he's cannibalizing them. I guess literally in this yeah. case. Wow. Um <laughs> Frankenstein. <laughs> Yeah, okay. This is interesting because I, I was, um, well, because of tornadoes, we actually haven't done it. We had to abort, but we were talking about Monsters, Inc. And I'm sitting there doing my Monsters, Inc. research. I'm like, there's a two season TV show of Monsters, Inc. Other than just that mm-hmm. sequel and multiple huh. theme park rides. 
And I am looking at Wally, which is on our list of the 100 best films. Monsters Inc. certainly is not. Um, but mm. there is there uh, there was a video game uh, around the time, and that's about it. It seems like there is no follow up um, to this, uh, and and uh, like any more animated stuff. Um, I I believe that Pixar has gone on record as saying that they consider it a complete story and do not want to make a sequel. We may. S- see some action on that with their restructuring now they just announced andrew stanton the director of this is directing toy story 5 that was announced like today <laughs> so, that that is oh, you know no. he'll be busy um but but i think it is the first thing he's directed since finding dory which was quite a while ago because you know he made uh john carter which you can find on the feed for this podcast as a Matt and Luke's sci-fi sanctuary yep. episode. Good movie, put yep. a crimp in his career. <laughs> I enjoyed it personally. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, but but yeah, it really kind of <laughs> torpedoed his directing career for a while. And uh, I, we, you know, maybe we'll see a wall F. I don't know. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I, I would think that probably not. I'd wall think M not Mars. No, yeah, I, I think, agree. Yeah, Wall M. I, I agree great. with that. This is a complete story, and don't don't do more. Like I said, I was yeah. kind of cheap, not quite cheekily saying the most interesting part of this movie is the ending credits montage. But that's also a much. I mean, that, yeah, that would be an interesting real. film to watch, right? Just yeah, a bunch of people well, try and learn farming again. That is not a kids' well, movie, you know. <laughs> no, they were, yeah. Everyone I've ever known who's decided they were going to try farming, um, that's not true. Some well, of them too, well. the famine. <laughs> well, you know, that, there's that that shot of the huge tree coming out of the boot at the end, which would signify many, 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 many years in the future. Yeah, they're robots. Kind of reminds me, repair. <laughs> kind of reminds me of the end of Attack on Titan. If you know, if you know, you know. I'm not going to go any further than that, but I don't know. Um, <laughs> Well, you can look it up if you really want to, but uh, I think the the passage of that much time is interesting. That the man, their relationship really lasted. Um, I'm I'm starting to look up my one star reviews, but does anyone have like a big point they want to throw out on this movie that we have not hit yet? <laughs> not only did he rip off Short Circuit's design, and it was a film about a robot finding sentience, he also steps on a bug, which is a direct reference to short circuit but in short circuit he kills the bug and that's how he learns about mortality here it's disney so the bug's fine it's the cute sidekick i do like a cockroach mm. as the cute sidekick by the way that, yeah that's yeah cute. but wouldn't it have been even better if wally accidentally killed it mm. <laughs> wait indeed he does at the end yeah that would be well, a weird over it twice in the film but yeah he wouldn't yeah. have noticed at that point though because that was his um, reboot no. segment the roach's mm-hmm. name is hal he's named after hal roach oh right. okay and, i thought you meant hal Hey, works both awesome. ways, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's not <laughs> exactly. Um, also, the the voice of Eve is a Pixar employee who like has no other credits, and I think she did great. Uh, at least the computer apparently is Sigourney Weaver. Yes, that's wild. Yay. Because she's done that at least one other time, <laughs> not twice. But... John Ratzenberger showing up in every Pixar movie. I guess we'll throw him out yep. as the uh, as the guy that first stops looking at the screen. <laughs> And I sort of said when Fred Willard shows up, it feels like you're probably in a dystopia because he only does satire, seems like. <laughs> so add a we... few notes about um, uh, references to Blade Runner. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, please. <laughs> I, I, I saw two. It was at the beginning when we get the tour of the city and you have these um, advertisement screens and the air pollution and everything, and the atmosphere was a bit Blade Runner y. Mm. And the other one was, uh, oh, yeah, um, later on in the film, they're on the ship and he has galaxies in his eyes. And that's uh, the end scene of Blade Runner, the old one, oh. um, with the, when the um, android uh, is dying mm. and he tells about his what he's seen and everything. Okay, so, yeah. I know that speech because um, occasional guest Scott Atkinson, sometimes when I answer the phone, he'll just do that speech. Ooh, <laughs> oh, that's great. Classy. I love that speech. <laughs> it's beautiful. Yeah. Right. He hadn't um, he hadn't seen Blade Runner until you introduced it to him not that long ago, right, Matt? But now and he's he obsessed became with it. obsessed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that seems uh, to be a theme. You keep giving him obsessions. It's pretty yeah, fun. Yeah, what was the, what did I recently give him? Uh, the Forbidden Zone. 
Oh, oh, and then Wicker Man, he got obsessed with the original oh, Wicker Man as oh, well. Good. So good, good, he did. Good. I, I actually bought him that for his birthday last month or two months ago. Excellent. So. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, yeah, Blade Blade Runner is a weird one. It's like the last time I watched Blade Runner, I started to get into. It. I actually did watch Twenty Forty Nine finally and uh, finished yeah. it. I think I like last, it. my last report on this podcast, I watched twenty minutes of before falling asleep at late at night, of course. Uh, so. <laughs> big vibes it it's now it's now finished <laughs> actually i've seen it I, once I, in the theater and i feel like i never want to see it again because it will never live up to seeing it in imax i can see it oh yeah <laughs> i saw it in the cinema too and it was totally full and there were people there who obviously had never gone to the cinema only watched <laughs> movies at home and on their phones and stuff and they were super excited and um, they had read up on uh, on the old Red Runner to get ready for it and stuff. And people were watching their phones all the time. And it was very busy and, and you know, kind of really weird audience. <laughs> and then there was this scene with the hologram. And then the, the whole audience went quiet and they oh, were in nice. the film. It was, it was amazing. Great. I really loved it. Yeah. The, the experience was great. I mean... <laughs> yeah, no, that that getting back to the classical music it makes me think a lot of symphonies, especially the early nineteenth century, will start with a boom, boom, or something like that, simply because it the, that's how the audiences were. They were drinking beer and talking, and it didn't matter if the worker was starting. So a lot of these classical pieces just start with a couple hits, just like listen to us. <laughs> is that is that why people ride it? At, <laughs> is that why people ride it at the rites of spring? Because that's like. 25 minutes at the beginning is dun, 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 dun. <laughs> I wish yeah. if I had a time machine I want to go back and see that like I just want to see it I, I don't think that we had the beer swilling audiences by right of spring but uh that that was more maybe for the, um just dis destruction of music what are you doing um <laughs> yeah uh I guess I will posit the question if this is film or filth which i don't think it's quite as clear cut because yeah, of course it's a film i'm like but i do have the thing where i like don't really want to i don't see this myself is... re-watching this anytime soon not mm -hmm. because it's bad but because it makes me weirdly uncomfortable <laughs> well on the mm. bad list we often have the sort of the conversation why is this film rated so low right whereas often on the good list it's not such a question whereas this one is because that first half hour is very amazing animation. But beyond that, I don't know why this film... I don't think this film deserves to be one of the top 100 films of all time. Like... I agree. For all that I, I like it. It is strange that it's ended up in that position. But maybe I, it is a film that people only watch once. I think it's something about the, the narrative thrust where it is a hopeful film where mm -hmm. I personally like Up better mm -hmm. than this and I always have. Partly because Up hits you with tremendous sadness at the beginning, and the rest of it is about Takes you up. like climbing out of the pit of despair, mm. which to me is, I guess, more relatable. <laughs> but, um, you know, th but th that also that movie rubs some people the wrong way because people are like, why is there so many dogs in this movie, or you know, the things <laughs> like that. It's not really <laughs> a movie people. about a house on a bunch of balloons. It's not. That's not what the movie's about. Anyway, no. I, um, I think it's. Just the hopefulness of it that that mm. speaks to people. And... On our list, the only other Pixar we're doing on on the good list is I think Coco. So our yes. our Ooh. arbitrary list tells us that Coco is superior to this. I guess. I mean, Toy Story two didn't make the list, right? Only no. one and three did. One and three made the list. Two did yeah, not. And I think two two's the best. Two is, yeah, me too. Two is rated, I believe, second lowest ahead of four but i would put um, ratatouille ahead of this too i think uh, ratatouille is one of my she's favorite films yeah yeah i but would yeah. it did so maybe this one coming like we said as like just at the end of pixar's prestige and then also the fact that probably a lot of people saw it once and didn't again i think yeah. people have this film very high in their memory and maybe yeah. surprised to rewatch it. It might be the sci-fi imagery too, because Ratatouille is like, well, there's a rat, there's some kind of Parisian some French stuff. people. Yeah, <laughs> I can't specifically remember what it looks like other than that. Up, kind of same thing. It's you know, it's at it's at uh, the Falls and um 
I forget the name, but uh, the falls in, in mm. South America, and it's relatively normal imagery done very well. I mean, a, mm. a, okay, a, a house floating on a bunch of balloons in the sky, that's pretty weird, but it's still, it's not just like, you're getting space and completely new imagery in Wally. Maybe that sticks yeah. with people, you know? Coco, mm. again, uh, mm. I've only seen Coco once, and that, I'm, I just remember insane, oh. you know, like... um what afterlife you know crazy mystical stuff mm. from that we'll get to it i might be wording it wrong there because i've only seen it once yeah. eight years ago or whatever it was but well, yeah, well, i've got is... someone here who can correct you if you need it i know that's <laughs> why i'm that's why i'm sitting here parsing my words carefully <laughs> up is at an 8.3 so up would be up is somewhere just outside of the list so how about rather to jurassic high. park zone you can spell Ratitude. it. That would be uh, my Toy stress. Story, spelling it. I'll say Toy Story 2 is 7.9 and Toy Story 4 is 7.7. 7. Hmm. So they're, you know, they're still pretty highly rated. Uh, how do I spell Ratatouille? Apparently not like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There it is. That's why okay. it's not on the list. People can't spell Nobody it. Nobody can spell it to try and find it. 8.1 <laughs> is pretty high. <laughs> if you add up the scores of all the different spellings of Ratatouille, then it's on the list. <laughs> um, <laughs> Personally, I liked The Incredibles more than Ratatouille as far as Brad Bird's films go. However, well, it's the best Fantastic Four since, movie, isn't it? <laughs> since yeah, I guess so. Since that came out, I have conflicted feelings about the uh, libertarianness of that film. It's <laughs> it hits me weird now that I've really thought about it a lot more. But at, as a just as a visual cartoon, I think it's amazing. Oh yeah, all that mid-century modern. Gotta love that. <laughs> it it had I don't know how to say it. They the, it had camera placement that was different than every other Pixar film. Like there were camera camera angles, can't, like quotation marks because there's not really a camera. But they were it was the cinematography on it was to me much more interesting than most other Pixar stuff. Um, uh, I do have a one star review here, which is actually the first mm -hmm. one. Uh, which seems I think it pretty much hits the nail on the head. I mean, just for one that I can read. Um, <laughs> it is a complete waste of money and talent. I wonder what film all those who raved about this piece of cinematic trash saw. Do they really believe and accept that our future will be so ugly, filthy, and sad? I guess I was agreeing with them on that. <laughs> I did not and could not even give a smile at any of the non-funny goings on. We had repeated images over and over again. There were two songs played over again. If these were songs from a Disney film, it might have been acceptable. These were two songs from Hello, Dolly! from 20th Century Fox. Hello, Dolly! was a fine stage musical, but just a so-so film. There's no dialogue in this wasted effort for nearly 40 minutes. What there is is plain idiotic. This film cost about $180 million. It is a waste of money, time, and talent. I also find this trashy film not fit material children even. A little broke down a little bit. Here's the part Luke will like where they, they list their ratings, which is very confusing. One star out of four. IMDb, one out of 10. And then it says 25 points out of 100. So like in one way, they've given it a higher rating. But in other ways, they gave it a one. So I don't know what that means. <laughs> 25 out of 100. That's like... <laughs> One and a half stars. If you're oh, on the four. Yeah, it would okay. be it would be two point five on a ten point scale. It wouldn't be. You're right. You're <laughs> right. You're right. <laughs> that that was the other thing I liked about that review. It it, it just muddles the but like not in yeah. a normal way where when it's a fake one, but in a confusing way. When you said they were going to give their scores, I thought you were going to be like graphics one out of ten, sound three out of ten. <laughs> you no, know, if you want I graphics one out of ten uh, from the same year or a year before or whatever. Um, I, I just had a, I didn't watch the whole thing, but I had a look at the TMNT, the, the animated Ninja Turtles film from 2007, which was made before the nostalgia wave hit. So it's not super yeah, successful. And it looks I like- I took my brother to see it in the cinema. Yeah. I love it. Uh, okay. But, but that's Patrick Stewart as an immortal villain. Oh, that's good. Oh, Ooh, cool. Story's <laughs> good. Script was good. But the animation is just like, how cheap I haven't we seen do it this? since 2007, so I remember it looking good, and now I don't want to rewatch it. You don't want to rewatch it. You read <laughs> the novelization at this point. The story is not bad. It's like it's kind of like the Ninja Turtles do Ghostbusters 2, which is it's kind of fun. Yeah, but, it's uh... like, like a Dark Knight <laughs> Returns of the Ninja Turtles. Yeah. <laughs> uh, animated films of 2007. B-movie. Uh, Beowulf, which was awesome, by the way. I loved Beowulf. Yeah. Uh, I saw that in 3D, and it's like Grendel rips a guy in half and throws half a guy at you directly. Um, <laughs> and it's Crispin Glover as Grendel. 
Anyway, <laughs> uh, Detective Conan Jolly Roger in the Deep Azure from Japan. There's a, there's a Detective Conan every year. Yeah, yeah. A Trontamon <laughs> and a Conan every year. Uh, Evangelion 1.0. This year's Conan was a big one because it 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 what caused the shippers problems was it? So there's a character mm. who people used to ship with another character, and this film revealed that they're cousins. Hmm. Oh no. That ain't gonna stop him. <laughs> <laughs> I bet here's one I bet is bad. The Land Before Time eight the wisdom of friends. That is probably wow. bad. Or they age like fine wine. I don't know. It's the eighth one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I I don't know. But it was certain okay, Persepolis. That's a classic. Oh. Yep. You guys seen that? I have not. French anime, mm. basically. I, I know what I, I, I like the box of the, the name like popped in my head when you said it, but I have not actually seen it. <laughs> I recommend, but yeah, read it. Oh, yeah, also. definitely. Shrek mm. the Third, The Simpsons movie. Mm-hmm. No, uh, sorry, yeah. I'm, I'm actually making sure Wally was uh was seven or eight. I think it was actually eight. Oh, it's eight. eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, it's it, close. It, the Ninja Turtles were seven. Yeah, it's close Mark, enough. You, close you enough. don't you don't need to now lift two thousand eight animated movies. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> seven is good enough. We got it. <laughs> I already felt like thanks for indulging me in what was already usually an indulgence where I read lists of things <laughs> that exist. <laughs> Some people like lists. Um, I guess we'll start winding down. But any final thoughts that uh, anyone wants to throw out on Wally? If you're listening to this and you've seen Wally and you haven't seen Short Circuit, fix that. <laughs> <laughs> and if you have seen Wally back then, don't watch it again. Or if so, just the first half hour. Mm. Or watch Short, because... Short Circuit. Because mm. now I'm mad at you guys for making me watch it and thinking, <laughs> ah, well, it's not as good as I remembered it. <laughs> Part of me you're loves... saying there's no... Um... There's no other media in the the Wally verse. There is an eight minute short film from Bernie. the same year. Yeah. Yes. The same year, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's like so. the guy who cleans up after Wally, mm. but he's a burner. <laughs> I think yeah, he's funny. It'd be funny if he was like running yeah, well, for president. Bye bye. But uh, anyway, I this was an interesting discussion. Thank you for joining us, Una. I feel like my perspective. Thanks for on having me. I'm super happy. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, do you have anything you'd like to point people to on the, the internet? I guess I'll preface that by saying um, over on the, the mission log page here, not ours for free. You can hear a conversation with you and uh, some of the, the mission loggers about um, living witness that is worth hearing and that's an episode worth watching yes. if you you can kind of just yes dive into that one like out of context really if you don't know Voyager. it's better yeah, than yeah, wally <laughs> i'm sorry it is it's better than wally i think i agree with you and i would not have before watching wally again so <laughs> same here <laughs> but uh yeah is there anything else you'd like to push people towards no nah. okay um i'm not very active on the internet so um this is my my uh, moment of glory here, guys. Okay. Nice. You can see space that way if you're not <laughs> on it so much. You, you see the stars, right? <laughs> yeah, you're a good example to people. If you're listening to this, yes, touch grass sometimes once in a while. <laughs> see the stars. Take take your screen down and look at someone else's screen. So I'm a little conflicted because <laughs> I'm outside all the time, out in nature, almost. I'm usually walking on a road. Does that count? <laughs> I'm terminally addicted to my phone. I Luke I gets ashamed. on more trails than I do. I think. Dirt yeah, yeah. Trails. Uh, <laughs> well, Matt consistently walks like ten kilometers a day. I won't walk for two weeks, and then I'll walk like forty kilometers in one day. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how many kilometers are in a mile. What two point two? I walk. I will consistently walk six miles a day, five days a week generally uh, except for i only hover on my chair nice. <laughs> <laughs> but you fall out of your chair and the gravity turns off <laughs> that's okay i look like, like a cute seal you know like flopping around <laughs> <laughs> i gotta say when i go to the grocery store and people are using those chairs and i know they can walk i'm always just kind of staring at them my um my grandmother an american thing i think <laughs> my grandmother got a mobility scooter this is like 15 something years ago i was still quite young um but i loved riding it around for fun 
<laughs> so I, she wanted me to go and get something for her from like the corner shop. So I went on her scooter, and apparently she was like her neighbors were calling her up in the week and like, "Oh, what's wrong with your grandson? Is he okay?" She said, "There's nothing wrong with him. He just wanted to ride it." <laughs> <laughs> are fun. That's good. A, bottom line, I would. Yeah. I would never begrudge a kid having fun riding one of those. No, this is I mean, somebody who is the same age as me, who is clearly completely able-bodied and just doesn't. Yeah, I think I think I was like fourteen or sixteen or something. Yeah, I also remember well, me and my uncle build, building a ramp for it, but it just obviously went like up and then <laughs> flop. Ooh, and then we tried yeah. to take his car over the ramp, but it just crushed the ramp. So we gave up on building ramps. So for our plug today, wow. Luca, I'll push this to you. Instead of a normal plug, I, I think you should uh, plug your Batman video again where you, people can see. Okay, yeah. Kind of stuff. <laughs> um, go on YouTube.com and search for um, Luke does the best thing ever. I think it's cool. <laughs> and it's, it's me on a bike in a Batman costume trying to replicate the bit in the dark night where he drives his bike up the wall and turns around. But it's basically just me doing pratfalls for five minutes <laughs> in a Batman costume on a bicycle. And and because it's not explicitly stated in the video, the uh, mother and daughter that walk by is is your mother and sister. My right? actual mother and my siblings, yes. And she walks by and says, pretend we don't know him. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that that's today's plug. So, what do, what are y'all doing? Why it's are y'all still looking at screens? Get away from the screens! It's called Luke attempts the best thing ever. Oh, You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I can put the link in the description. <laughs> yes, link in bio. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, I can All put right. that there. Very nice. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. It's really fun. They can see Matt's and uh, Mark's ass if they go in the link. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, you know, we'll again, thanks for jumping in. For something better. <laughs> well, it, it, it always amuses booster. me. When, it amuses the hell out of me when good when the quote good list doesn't live up to people's expectations. It's just so interesting. Like, well, it wasn't like that, watching it was a disaster. It was just like, no, no. this wasn't. It gave us something to talk about. Yes, I feel like when we go to good movies <laughs> that everybody's like, this is good. We all like it. It's impossible to find anything to talk about. And then we right? end up talking about Batman for 10 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. When we get to the when we get to the top of the list and it's stuff like the Shawshank Redemption, I am kind of feeling like we're gonna have 10 minutes of like, yeah, this is good, I get it. And then like Tom Hanks, he's a good actor, isn't he? <laughs> he's gonna read that one, but... stories. <laughs> no, I know, but <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and yeah. definitely thanks for doing late night because I guess it's getting yeah. Sure. Yeah, enjoyed time, it though. very much. <laughs> thanks, guys, for having me. Okay. And thanks okay. for anyone still listening. I will hit the record.